and we are on the stream. I'm saying, like, I think it's 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 run to its end, guys. AI's over. <laughs> Everybody, stop doing anything AI related. AI, Please left. stop. Uh, 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 you know what they say: alpha in, alpha out. <laughs> it's a, it's a out. So a, uh, a clout. I uh, did a couple talks this week. Uh, did one for <laughs> did one for I was at a uh, group of investors and a group of college students and I'm going to tell you where the best questions were <laughs> and it was not by the <laughs> richest people I spoke to <laughs> all were good all were good but it was I did a talk at Santa Clara University and uh, afterwards just get mobbed by kids just mobbed it was just like because like all the panelists were because it was just they're just eager to learn about this stuff, just excited to learn about where the state of AI is. And they have a lot of questions and, you know. Uh, so at the college level, and maybe we should save this for the show, but uh, at the college level, are do they do they seem to still have preconceived notions? They, do they have their baggage, their priors? Oh, when I ask how many of them use chat GPT, almost every hand went up. Yeah. And the teachers know this. The teachers are using it. So like, it's it's like... It's done. It's done. Yeah. All yeah, according uh, to Brad. Yeah. <laughs> Battle stations fully operational. <laughs> uh all right. Well we, we, we got enough hardcores here. You wanna you wanna get jump in? Let's yeah. yeah. Okay, in three, two Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. And Papa Smurf, Justin Robert Young. That's me. Um, uh, I have a nebulous relationship to all the other Smurfs in terms of <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I their father? Am I their sibling? Nobody well, knows. Why, why am I <laughs> acting paternal to the one female? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, troubling, troubling weird. questions. As, they, as Andrew often says in fiction writing, if this is true, what else is true? Is true. <laughs> yes. uh, so uh, how is the newest edition of the Weird Things family, Justin? Uh, Bella may or may not have done her first social smile about an hour and a half ago. Oh, so uh, dope. that she's been working toward it slowly. But uh, uh, I think she might have done it only an hour and a half ago. And it's been uh, it's been it's been actually amazing uh, these last few days because uh, we might talk about it in after things, but it's been a pretty stressful week. And uh now that things are kind of calming down a little bit, I, I have, you know, more time to just sort of be around the baby, which is, uh, you know, just like the whole, like the point of life. It's amazing. Hmm. So qu question is, how does it feel, given that a human, apparent, as I understand theoretically, a human can be capable of like <laughs> inventing things like cures, uh, yeah. computers, uh, becoming a world leader, a religious figure, or a serial killer. Mm -hmm. What's it like to have that a mass murderer? Even what's it like to have that responsibility as a parent, knowing that any of those outcomes possible? Well, if she's a mass murderer, the good chance is I probably go first, and <laughs> and if that's if that's the case, then this is everybody else's problem, not mine. Whether or not you know, no matter no matter what kind of job I do, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's going to be interesting because she's still very much in the food processing phase where she's just kind of adorable, but it's mostly food goes in and then food comes out. And otherwise, the only question is whether or not she's sleeping or awake and whether or not we have to be soothing her. But, uh, you know, once she gets she's about to get into the pattern recognition stage and then past that, we get into more uh, understanding and mimicking social stuff, at which point I'll really have uh, a problem on my hands. I'm going to have to actually like <laughs> take stock of my own behavior. And I've actually thought more and more about like how much I'm on my phone uh, because as we all are just addicted to our devices, whenever we're bored, we pick up the slate that makes us not bored and we can justify it by saying, well, it's work and I'm doing this and I got to keep attention on X, Y, and Z. But I also know that it's probably not helpful for her to constantly see me on my phone. And I probably should have some kind of boundaries when she is around. And so uh, I, I'm right now just at the phase where I'm feeling bad for myself about being on the phone around her. I haven't made any personal changes, 
But uh, we'll see whether or not those changes are affected as she gets uh, older and starts recognizing things. Yeah, she'll find reasons to hate you. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, th th this this is more in the, I don't want her to be like me and not even yeah. like in a sense that I don't want her to be like me as an adult. I don't want her to be like me in that she's going to demand a tablet or a phone at an right. earlier age. I just I need to I need to keep uh, I don't know. I, I want to do more and more talking with uh, the, 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 the chat GPT voice assistant because I would rather her just, you know, be on the phone with Auntie uh, uh chatty g than uh <laughs> than, than looking at a, a a tablet and just hitting the like jerry's balloons games like yeah. from rick and morty oh how oh, uh we'll see we will see um not a, not not a small amount of responsibility there no no a lot of pressure a lot of pressure yeah. to to screw this one up well speaking of somebody else who knows a lot about parenting and technology elon musk <laughs> did the we robot event last night oh uh, i I, I know nothing about this have you not seen this yeah this no. was pretty wild it was all yeah. over social media last night i assume it was out in texas i i, I think he's most no, of the Tesla's, it was in california right, warner brothers studio that was warner brothers studio was okay. that was the uh um world famous warner brothers back lot Oh, I was wondering why, whether or not they built something like that. But yeah, it makes a lot more sense that it was the WB backlot. They were uh, probably intending to combine it with a success, a we did it mission accomplished party for the success of Joker 2, you know, yeah. to save their studio. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah. So uh, uh, I was actually curious to your opinion on this, Andrew, because the big announcement was his robot, which he says that scale will cost about $30,000 and going to be taxi. No, the, not the ro not the, the the physical humanoid robot thing. Did he announce a price? Because he they said the price for the robo. He taxi. said, yeah, I, I, maybe it was just a thing I saw on online mm -hmm. that it was uh, at scale, and obviously that's not now. It's it's certainly not initially that at scale it would cost anywhere between thirty and forty thousand dollars for the robot man. Uh, but I, I that that seemed more concept car than uh than anything else but they certainly were, were debuting them they were walking around and serving drinks and dancing all yeah all the robots. I, I i i watched it and i i thought he only announced the price for the robot the cyber cab so the big reveal is the cyber cab i don't know that he's announced a price for the robot i i no, again not I, I i i it was not a price announcement i think it was just him musing on what it would cost no 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 i watched the thing and he was musing about the cyber taxi what i then saw. i saw the wrong thing online i apologize. okay no i mean i may be correct i may have missed it because there i will say the live stream there were stuff that what they came out in videos after it's like oh the camera wasn't there whatever um i think you think i think we're both correct that it was actually 20 to 30 for the optimist and 30 to 40 or whatever for the robo taxi uh okay. so okay. the robo taxi were there limitations on the announcement i would love to hear the official line on on what they were pitching on the robo taxi so, well, hold on. Do, do we do we want to do the, the robot man first or or or, or the robot taxi? Because we I think the robot man. What yes, do that? Yeah, I think because you talked a lot about how robotics are are really going to be a gigantic part that we had barely seen pop up above the surface in this kind of AI revolution. You've you've been very very vocal on that, uh, and this this Optimus product the, is yeah. The, the the walking was great the the walking was much better i don't know if we have video to show that they did he did it yeah we're, so we're, just, we're scrolling down uh i'm seeing it for the first time and this verge has some animated gifs and it right now it's just handing out drinks but but the nuance like the balance compensatory actions that it's making to maintain its balance give it this what like like for example you see the thumb at one point kind of unnecessarily wiggle left and wiggle right but then you realize that humans do that to keep their hands presenting well. It's those those um, the interstitial frames, like right there. Did you see the 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 thumb kind of wiggle left and right? Um, it, it it's just amazing. It really looks like a dude in a costume. Yeah. So there's a they did it. They again. It was a the event was technically scenically was amazing because they went and they put they took warner brothers and they went they put all this neon all this made it look like this futuristic city they lit up all the buildings and the 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 set and all that and then uh 
you know, they did, you know, several announcements. You know, the major ones was the Robo Taxi, the Optimus, and then they also the the Robo Van. But on the Optimus thing, there's a shot you're looking at right here where they walked out. That was really, in, in, you know, that was actually it was like it was a much smoother walkout than we'd seen before. So I'm trying to see if we can find out uh, find any video of that because I really want you to see that the 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 walking. Oh, I found it. I found a link to it. Oh, great. Um, let me send it to you. Okay, let me um, uh, here. I'll uh, open up my email so that I can jump over to that. But go ahead. Uh, so uh, uh, the the walking, just like the nuance of the hand movements, I assume that the walking was it was a little bit herky jerky the first time that we saw it when it looked like a, a chassis open homemade PC. Yeah, so here I sent you a link so you can see that. But yeah, it was the the overall it was a very interesting. Event. Like I said, there was a lot of camera go here, cut to here, Elon talking about a thing, and then everybody start to applaud because something is happening over there. And then then hey, a thing happens here. And so uh I, I was a little confused by what I was seeing here, as you can see. Uh um, that 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 but, has been because I remember I did watch the Cybertruck event live and it was very much the same. Like not even the host seemed to be able to uh, to know where the action should be, but we're seeing them yeah. walk out right now, and yeah, they're they're moving in in almost lockstep unison. Oh, but nope. you notice the the walking isn't the old man walk that it had before of the 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 weird crouchy. This is a not it's a much more improved gate. It's a they got criticized when they first showed Optimus because they were using like decade old sort of walking algorithm where this is a much more uh smooth walk it does still have kind of a rigid back structure like it looks like somebody it's tweaked a robot, their back. Brian. oh no no no! look look i'm not i'm not bagging on i'm trying to draw <laughs> a visual image for the audio listeners uh yeah. but but it looks like it has the full mobility of somebody who's just wearing a back brace and has to keep their back uh uh rigid yeah. So I'm seeing on Twitter, I don't know whether or not it's uh, uh, legitimate, but at least it's everybody's saying the same thing, is that uh, uh, Elon says at scale it'll be twenty to $30,000 available in 2026. Yeah, and it was 30-something or more, whatever was for the taxi. That was yeah. the thing I was confused yeah. about was the pricing on that. So yeah, 20 to 30, which, you know, given the track record now, it'll be 80. Um, <laughs> uh, and available but, in two years. Although that yeah, will probably again, be different you know, with the way everything's getting faster. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm short-term skeptical, long-term bullish. I'm still have a position in Tesla. Uh, Justin, what did you think? I mean, it looked incredible. If it is what it says it is, and I, I, I think mostly by your point of view, I have become more and more long-term bullish on robotics in an age of AI that I think we are about to see a evolutionary leap forward with what we believe is possible in the world of robotics of physical robotics um in you know the, the with with you know, the capabilities that we've seen with large language models so like uh, and just uh, machine learning in general so it makes sense to me i think you know 20 30000 let's imagine that it's it's there, maybe even double that. I mean, I could see a world in which, you know, you finance one of these things, and it's if it if it does what it says it does in terms of being a robot butler, <laughs> you know, for for your life. I, I could I could see it being incredibly popular. Musk said among the three things that he announced last night, this would be the biggest product ever and the backbone to a world of uh, of you know, a, a global boom. It, it makes sense. I mean, it looks amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. to the point where where Brian, the first thing I saw was the clip online of Musk getting into the robo taxi. Mm -hmm. And he walks out with Optimus. And uh, I thought we don't know. Well, okay. Well then that's what I don't know. I yeah. thought it was a man in a suit. Yeah. And uh uh so then I saw that's the first thing I saw. Then I saw everything else from there, and I'm like, oh, was that really a thing? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they, he walked out with some something in a SpaceX suit, but I think okay. the spacesuit, 
I don't. I think. I think that was just a person because it looked okay. like it walked out faster. I don't know. I, I. I. I would. I would be delighted to be completely wrong. So I'd be delighted to be wrong. Um, uh, I, I, that was I my say, initial thought. That was my initial thought, and then I saw all the other clips of the robots dancing and serving yeah. drinks and stuff like that, and I was like. Oh, okay. I mean, it shows you that Tesla is a company that is pushing forward with innovation. And obviously, Elon post Twitter acquisition and, you know, really post him posting on Twitter <laughs> a lot uh, uh, has become an extraordinarily divisive figure to the point where I think people want to erase some of the things that he has an unquestionably uh, uh, remarkable track record on, and that is SpaceX and tesla and we have seen and starlink and we've seen over the last you know just month and a half just remarkable uh, uh leaps and and uh, marks of reliability from all of those you know starlink helping with uh rural cleanup in with, with hurricane helene in in north carolina that really shows some of the the benefits of that kind of internet solution Obviously, SpaceX rescuing two astronauts that had been stranded in space because their product is more reliable. And now the future-focused element of what Tesla can do, uh, uh, both in terms of Optimus, which is a huge step forward in terms of what we would think of as you know, Tesla's purview, but also with, with I'm sure we're going to talk about now, the, the robo-bus and the robo-taxi, or cyber-bus yeah. and robo-taxi. Yeah, I think that... Uh... It's a very Elon, Elon causes chaos for sure. You know, he, we, we, we've long described him and other people as mules and the Isaac Asimov Foundation sort of terminology. I think he has an incredible ability to attract talent. And I think that's really right now to make things work. You need money, you need talent. And <laughs> right, right on cue. Uh, uh, I guess it's Friday afternoon. So Spectrum feels the need to they... give me some sass. Uh, Andrew, just so you know, uh, Spectrum is doing their Friday afternoon dance, but this time I'm smart enough to fill the dead air knowing that there'll be two or three of these. Uh, and uh, I guess I'll call them again later, but it seems like you're back on track. I'll just jump in and fill if it happens again. All right. Starlink, Brian. Starlink. Uh, yeah, dude, uh, uh, I, I, it's getting there. Like, I don't even know that I care about the latency anymore. It's just, I want so the minimal. Stability. The latency is so, so negligible. I, I, and certainly like, if you're not, you know, high end gaming, I'm sure it's fine. But in, and yeah. for, uh, zoom stuff, how, how much does Starlink cost per month? Oh and God, what, are, are, something like that. Are, are there bandwidth restrictions or, or caps or anything? Um, I would have to go. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go should, should, we, should we get? Yeah, should we get a rep on? You want to call? Okay, call I'm uh, about we, ready to, man. <laughs> we'll cover it live on the air, man. Yeah. Uh, so I, 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 yeah, I'm excited about the potential. I think that robotics are going to. You know, we said before they're going to in the next five years. We're we're very quickly. You know, you'd see like Unitree makes like bipedal things you can buy and stuff. The quality of that's questionable, but we'll see. I think that within five years' time, you'll be able to buy something for about 20k, and I think the price will fall a lot too that they'll actually be useful in your house because like you see some of these demos and it's like it's carefully like in the thing it's like carefully handing out packages and they're putting these trays in front of it precisely which yeah. they'll get better they'll, they'll get way way better and you know to, to the point when i know i can sit here and i can say hey can you go grab me a diet coke and it can open up the doors walk down the stairs go into another room and grab a soda out of the fridge and bring it up to me well, well done think, think about how many parts of that scenario just two years ago w would have seemed like impossibly difficult, but suddenly our child's play and trivial. Like for example, the natural language way in which you portrayed asking for a Diet Coke, like, hey, bring me a Diet Coke. Uh, it'd be all like, oh, what if you mumble? You'd have to say voice assistant, uh, get Coke, uh, uh, playing the Beatles. Uh, no, get Coke and all that stuff. Uh, that all of a sudden is n nothing. And now we've seen now we're at the part where we're going to be fussing about battery life. Yeah. I, I You think about, as you look at the robot, you see where that is, and you think about how far ahead, as you said, where these language models are, where you have a conversation in ChatGPT chat in advance. It's, it's human-like. The Turing test is no longer really talks about it because it's like we just passed that. If I brought this back in time 10 years ago, the top experts in the world would insist that this was a thing 50 years away. And here we are now. Um and then you think about, okay, that level of reasoning applied to locomotion to understand where its hand is in space, what it needs to grab it. Like, yeah, like we're, 
it, the rest is, you know, we, we, we use this phrase a lot, the rest is engineering. And even, even with, we'll talk about this now, we'll actually we'll, we'll finish the talk with this, we'll talk about kind of the O1 model again, but uh, yeah, I think robotics is here, it's happening fast. It, it's, it's only a matter of time before you get them in your house doing practical stuff. And you might have an indoor robot, you might have an outdoor robot, something that's outside that just walks around and does, you know, that's more rain, you know, waterproof, rainproof, rugged, whatever. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I don't think until just in the last three minutes, it had occurred to me that, that the Turing test itself now seems utterly foolish. Something that I had heard about most of my entire life suddenly seems like a really dumb way to evaluate whether or not something is AI, because we have, we are on the other side of the Turing test and nobody believes that AI is conscious <laughs> at all. Well, yeah, that was, yeah, that was the whole point of the Turing test was saying that con sentience or consciousness is a silly thing because you can't objectively measure it. The only thing we can measure is what somebody responds to or says. And then now, now the que now the big step is how well do these agents behave in, in, in embodied either within, if I give it control of my browser or my computer, can it do all the work that I can do? If I give it a physical body, can it do useful work? And now we're going to be defining what's useful work, whatever. But yeah. I think those things happen quickly. So the other announcements. Yes. RoboTaxi. So I was un... I, 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 I have not paid a ton of attention to do it aside from people... Uh, retweeting the live stream or uh, pictures from the event itself what is robotaxi a tesla competitor to like waymo or is it a thing that we are that that i can buy and then just make money on i can i can send yeah, forth so my robotaxi and so yeah you called it cyber van which is the cyber cab which is the correct term i don't know why i want to call it robotaxi but so in theory, what it is, is he, Elon talked about where somebody could own a fleet of these, you know, a Uber driver can instead own several of these things. He says, it could be like a shepherd and send them out and take care of them. Uh, but the idea that you could buy these things around 30K and basically put them, deploy them into different areas, cities, locations, whatever. And then they also showed a robotic vacuum cleaner going in and cleaning the thing out to do it automatically and cleaning the windshield and stuff, which I thought was another thought. But yeah, that's the idea. And they show these videos of what would happen if you started removing all the cars from cities and turning, you know, t turning parking lots into parks. He's, as Elon says, getting rid of the ing lot. And you have, you know, it was a very visual graphics to sort of show this idea of like, yeah, they show like Dodger Stadium or whatever. Like, what if you just could turn all that parking lot into park and whatnot? And, uh, you know, he, he does this math where he's like, ah, like, you know, average cars only use like 18 hours a week. You know, what if you could get to use it 10 times as much? Well, also, average cars used it 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So yeah. there is sort of like a capacity limit to what you can do there. But it is a very interesting idea that, you know, as we start to transition more towards autonomous transportation, I use Waymo all the time in SF. Like, I, yeah. I've used Waymo you know, I used it last week at the Dev Day event. Picked me up in front of my hotel, drove me all the way to the event. And how, how fast does, does it go? Can Can you describe, like, like from an Andrew point of view, what that's like? Because I've never, I've never ridden in anything that fully was driving itself. I don't think. So imagine car. I, okay. All right. All right. No. 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 <laughs> so hey, imagine uh, now. Uh, hold on. No. No. Okay, no. Right. I'm not done. Imagine <laughs> you get into a car, but the driver does not have a Bluetooth in his ear. Oh, yeah. is not watching international soccer on his phone on the side <laughs> is not you know uh blasting you know some uh some music from a culture that you're radio. not familiar with yeah yeah okay <laughs> you know there's not the smell of like overpowering smell of different perfumes or whatever you get in there and it's just you inside of a car and it's 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 and it's colorful it's nice remember the whole jet blue and the the yeah, the was it Virgin America airplanes when they would do all the lighting inside, oh, yeah. the yep. mood lights, all that. It's that. It's you sit inside of there. The first minute or two, you're like, oh my god, you know, the car is driving itself, and then like everybody has the same experience. Like, huh, oh, okay, back to my phone, and you're done, and you're out. So um, Brian, you know, in in Austin, Waymo is available, uh, but the zone goes down to Ben White at its most south, and at its most north, it's like Hyde Park. You guys, uh, so I is, want you field trip. You guys got to go do Waymo. Uh, so yeah. I don't, I don't have access yet. They, I'm still on the wait list for Austin. I think that they have, they're, they're waiting until they expand 
to where my house is that they're going to put me on the the wait list. But I want I want to just so I, I'll, I'll go downtown just so I can go somewhere else in downtown in Owemo. <laughs> I mean, that, that, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Uh, I, I didn't even know there was a wait list. I guess uh, I guess I'll punch get that on in it. it, dog. Do, get it, on it. It doesn't can go highway you, speeds, does it? No, of course not. It's got to be. Can Ebenezer Main Scrooge tell you the best part about it? The best part about it, please. Yes. You get to the end, your ride's done. No You're tip. Not asked to tip. Yeah. yeah. And I tip. I tip well. I generously tip. But if I have an option between a serious a service that just gets a thing done, I'm going to choose that. And so you get to the end, and it's like, hey, we're done. Like, click it. Like, do you, you know, like, did you want to tip? There's no, because it's a robot. Like, no, sorry. <laughs> you know, there is a, um, uh, uh, by the way, I do. Uh, for the audio listeners, uh, the visual is stunning. We have three uh, middle-aged men who are extolling the virtues of a brave new world of abundance, a Shangri-La that's just around the corner, and all three of us are wearing the exact same uniform as we <laughs> yep. as we wait for the uh, <laughs> for the slimming, ascension, slimming, slimming black T-shirts on, That's on what... this the day of the great comet sighting. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, uh, this is October 11th as we record this, and just after sunset, there's going to be hopefully a gorgeous comet vi visible to the naked eye. Oh, I forgot about that. Um, I'll check that out. Uh, so, Robo Taxi, very interesting idea the uh, excuse me cyber taxi i think it's a fascinating idea that you have um that other people explore but the idea of letting independent people whatever buy them will be interesting we'll see what where that business plan pans out i think you know waymo and some of the other ones building stuff are onto a very interesting idea and that is like instead of having a car that has to drive everywhere have a car that drives a predetermined route uh elon mentioned something else which was about the computers in them he said you know we may put them make them more powerful than they need to be he said, you know, think about this. If we have a car just sitting there, um, we could use it if we had 100, he goes, if we have 100 million of these, think of all the compute we have because he's obviously thinking about training data and being able to do inference and everything else like that. And I do think that's, I think people are going to start, that's a whole nother conversation to have about people are going to start thinking about idle processors and stuff and how you want to utilize them. So that was interesting. He mentions that the, char the car does completely inductive charging and that basically that there's just no port thing get plugged into, just, you know, basically a pad that connects, you just touches the surface of something and charges it, which I thought was an interesting notion. Um, the car itself, the cyber taxi, looks like it's a two-seater. Uh, it was funny because they watched the video of the people afterwards going to, like, get into the cyber cars, and you see a dad with, like, two kids. Yeah. Oh no. To look at this, and, and it was just a very brief kind of thing. Like there are two kids with them, and it's like, whoops. Ah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. But uh, we'll see. Um. And but then like, you know, the, I'll tell you the 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 suicide doors on it look amazing. Like like it yeah. is it is an extraordinarily stylish automobile, yeah. and it is certainly in the same design language as the Cybertruck, which has been beat up for uh, uh the way that it looks. But this is something that looks incredibly sleek and it looks awesome when when the when when, when the suicide doors pop up uh yeah it, it um uh it's they're kind of like a butterfly they're not like the uh, uh gull wing doors that you think of in a delorean or a, a model x they go forward and up and uh they look awesome um yeah. the oh i uh i had a question but then i lost it never mind well, the other the other reveal was they showed the Robo Van, which was I I'm like, man, this is like a sharper image catalog item from 1995 for like either vacuum a dustbuster or holding your CDs. So uh, the design felt a bit more 90s retro than forward progressive, but still the idea that they want to build uh, a robotic van that can carry 20 people or cargo. Uh, it does it. It's interesting. The photo that I'm seeing here. Looks very uh, 1920s Art Deco uh, modernist. Uh, yeah, no, it, look, it looks like it looks like the, the the Rocketeer has a gigantic man in, bun. I mean, in, I mean, not in, not in to the, draw too many in inferences, the thumbnail, but, but when it gets bigger, I think it feel it, it does it. It loses that kind of of the sleekness. For well, me. in in the thumbnail, it does look like I don't want to draw too much of a parallel, but it does look very Atlas shrugged, which is exactly what I would expect from uh, the founder of the new Galt's Gulch. I mean, I wish it. I like I said, I wish when you look at the bigger ones, it really flat fall. 
I, cause at first I'm like, oh yeah, that angle like really looks like the, the, you know, the, the 1930s thing, but then you see the thing and it feels more kind of blocky and sharper image CD holder kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, I did. So, I, but, but, but this is, this is the, the, the general idea though here is that if, if we are all in on autonomous, right, if we're all in on full self-driving, then yes, you want for the, the 20 something on the go or the uh, commute person, a two person vehicle is uh, uh, sufficient, but there are a lot of situations where you want higher capacity. And so this is the solution for that. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, you, you, in this case, think... like in a scene straight out of the fifth element, they have a diner car pull up and just, you know, it's a restaurant right there for you. Yeah. You think about like, if you want to get from, you know, your airport to the hotel, you know, you can contract to the service to provide the driver and provides all that. But you know, you could, you could think you could see a company where they could say, listen, like, yeah, we're just going to have like, we're going to have like a, a, a fleet of 10 of these. They're going to be just completely distributed based upon uh, flight times, hotel capacity, et cetera. You start to get into when you can provide transportation for people like packets, you know, yeah. you, you, all of a sudden, a lot of interesting things become possible. You know, growing up in South Florida, uh, I was always impressed by and, and, and part of the reason it worked was you know, we had the Air Sea Show, right, which was what they would. They'd say it's the largest outdoor event in the world, which probably not true, but still a huge, huge, huge event. Part of the advantage of the air sea show was that where did it take place? Well, in the air and the sea. So the viewing area was several miles long, you yeah. know, which meant that you had all these interest and egress points to get to the event because instead of just having like one or two roads that get bottlenecked, like when you're going to see a you know a sports event or whatever. But and you think about that too, it's like, oh yeah, I could see how I could create a modular transportation network on the fly for a big event. You have Comic Con coming or whatever. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, we're gonna have a bunch of robo robo vans picking people up from the airport, dropping them off at this parking lot here, and then you can go pick up a cyber taxi from there and go to your hotel. Like you could create an ad hoc transportation network, and it only has to exist for a day, and then it's done. And those things go off to other cities, other places. <clears throat> so I, I recovered that uh, that flyaway thought from earlier. You mentioned that the idle uh, compute uh, capability could be something that would be recovered like during uh, charging times for vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, extrapolating that, if that's true, then what else is true? It occurs to me that I can picture 20, 30 years from now that it'll be kind of uh, unconscionable or socially inappropriate to heat your house with anything other than compute power. Like, why are you not solving cancer while you're heating your house? Uh, there, I wonder how many other, like, uh, okay, what you want is a warm house, but along the way, if you're going to heat the house, you might as well do it. You might as well sort the universe while you're at it. Well, the, 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 the challenge gets in there is while a, a rack or two of high-end, so opening i got a delivery a couple of days ago from uh nvidia and it's this blackwell their latest nvidia processor right the problem is that the, the amount of compute to heat your house is going to be worth a lot more than your house yeah you know so if you th think about like the processors and what it's going to take like if you're 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 you know they're hot but you know per Per chip, they're so exceedingly expensive towards that. Like, if you think about what it's what that chip costs to do that. Sure, sure, but sure. Certain... Well, and and in theory, it'll be like most of these things. The first early adopters will be participating in a gimmick, you know. But uh, but eventually, I wonder if, like, for example, let's say you need your house to be warm all the time. So, in theory, a house is built with uh and there already are places where they have pipes with running water that warm everything up really that turns your entire house into a heat sink and uh i don't know there, there, there's some crazy i uh, this is wacky concept stuff that i'm thinking of no i get you I get, i'm just saying that like the, the the challenge is is that per per watt of heat whatever generated by a chip you're talking about you know a hundred fifty thousand dollar chip Right. And, and, that, and that you put them into data centers because of band throughput and bandwidth and whatever. So the, the heat is like the 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 energy cost is the least expensive part or the, the least valuable thing you're throwing away. Th this is well, this is the black box I would have to introduce to get around that is I could imagine the possibility. I can't tell you what it is because I'm not smart, uh, but I could imagine the possibility that there's some kind of blockchain mining 
operation that offsets that cost. Like all of a sudden, uh, not something as simple or dumb as Bitcoin, but you know, something valuable where it's like, we want more I, of these. I guess I'm just saying, I, I don't, again, we could go down the rabbit hole on this, but like I, the, these, the, the the gpus are so expensive the gpus themselves are so catastrophic expensive and you want you keep them data centers for a reason because of you know one the throughput bandwidth it's or data center etc and certainly for dist in the distributed computing the heat generation given it is just is just you know would be worth pennies compared to the compute value of that but to the point of like getting the point of saying that people having like if you're saying like giving value out of every everything you have in your network, like, yeah, you can run really capable models on your iPhone. And there are people who are doing like, you know, we're doing blockchain things on phones and stuff, which were really horrible because all they did was just turn, you know, fossil fuels. Turn, you know, yeah, yeah. Into, yeah, into, you know, into imaginary money and wasteful. But if you were running, you know, things, if you said, well, hey, I've got five gigs spare time and like, you on your desktop system right there, you could be running a you know a pretty good image generator or chat GPT bot or something for something. And that is a thing like, you know, I could see somebody building a network of saying, let's use the inference. Yeah. Uh at any rate, sorry, sorry, I took us on a no, side no, no. side quest it's there. It's what we do, Brian. <laughs> it's what we do. And um, and what and what we do costs cash cash we get from you patreon.com slash weird things where you need to go if you want to support the show patreon.com slash weird things keep us loud live and independent right here on the program patreon.com slash weird things so uh sky quakes gentlemen S sorry uh yeah this sky guy quake. quakes <laughs> sky quake sky quake uh huh? wait, uh it, okay uh sky quake I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's what happens when a meteor sk like skips, uh, it bounces off the atmosphere of Earth, like kind of almost like an arrow breaking. Where if it goes fast enough, I could imagine ripples happening all around the. I, I'm I'm making this best, up. But this best, is my best, yes. best theory, Brian. It's the best theory I've heard so far. Wait, so are we measuring skyquakes? I want you to just Google skyquake. All right. Skyquake. And oh, I just went to skyquake.com. Whoops. <laughs> it's available at GoDaddy. <laughs> Skyquake is a mysterious phenomenon that is leaving scientists uh, baffled. Uh <laughs> the the <laughs> the image art is exactly what you'd expect. <laughs> Computer, give me a picture of the sky. <laughs> Uh, it says here, skyquakes might sound a lot like thunder or sonic booms, but they usually tend to come when there's no sign of storm clouds in the area or even signs of aircraft passing through the area. Scientists have tried to come up with multiple explanations for the phenomenon. They remained baffled by the loud booms that often seem to come out of nowhere. These loud booming sounds have been reported all over the world, according to BBC. Depending on the region you're located in, you might know them by a different name. Some people call them fog guns or umanari, which translates fog. to cries that was our from band. the sea. Remember that fog gun? <laughs> fog gun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sky quake. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, so there, I, 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 I would be curious what the records are on this or, or do they feel them in the air or just, they just hear them. You hear them. And so there, it's been a, a phenomenon that's happened for years and years. And the problem with, you know, social media being is you hear a thing and you don't know if this is a new thing or a, a thing that happens all the time, but either way, it's kind of like, Hey, uh, this is, kind of like crazy that this thing happens um so uh you know what's going on uh, what's going on well here this is uh this appears to be a youtube video possibly capturing one um uh i guess this is
I can't hear anything if something is supposed I, to I'm be. not hearing anything at all Oh, either, oh but... sorry, sorry. It, it's very quiet, and the audio listeners are hearing it, but but it's like a wow, in and out. Um, I could try cranking it up, but but it's really No, if, if, if they got it, they got it. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, hopefully, in fact, every, whoever's in the chat, let us know if you guys were able to hear that. Hopefully, I didn't just broadcast a bunch of dead air. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this sky cricks are full of crap. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a lie. Here. Yeah. You guys hear that hiss, right? Oh, I just realized the, the, the Google Meet probably is filtering it. But it sounds like a... I think these things are BS, Brian. I think... Yeah. It up. Uh, uh, so that could be exactly right. Okay, good. At least one person heard it. Uh, this seems like an opportunity for a bunch of people to take unrelated phenomenon and call them skyquakes. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, it, it comes down to is whenever yeah, you hear sound, you don't know where it's coming from, and there are different things. You can have atmospheric effects where you're going to hear the sound of traffic or other things echoed away. You know, there's been some debate about how they changed some fuel additives in like shipping fuels or whatever that that's affected cloud lib albedo, uh, cloud libido too, but cloud yeah. albedo. And there could be things like a, something as simple as like, oh, reducing the amount of lead in a thing or whatever. But I don't, I don't know if there's any comprehensive database that shows us that these things are increasing or decreasing. Um, you know, because that's, you know. Uh, certainly a factor to think about these things is just because we're getting more reports doesn't mean that there's more of a thing, um, which is often sort of, you know, very well overlooked. Oh, that's interesting because the, uh, that, that I forgot that that knife cuts both ways. We've talked about before how Steven Spielberg used to believe in UFOs when he did close encounters, but he didn't by the time he did war of the worlds. And the reason was just camera phones. He said, if they were there, then we would be seeing more UFO photos, not fewer. And and once he noticed the trend of the fidelity goes up, UFOs go down, then he lost interest. And But you're describing the reverse, which is because there are so many more cameras, there's so many odd sounds to capture. Yeah, we're, we're things that aren't direct. Like, you know, we saw this, I actually write a paper about this, like we've talked about this before, when when I worked with James Randi in the '90s, when digital cam, when when little cameras that were uh, electronic or like little like battery operated but film little cameras, you'd you'd get certain kinds of phenomena that come up a lot with the little flash, and uh, you would get certain kinds of streak because of the film they used. When you had the little digital cameras came about, you started to get like the little LED streaks as the frequency. Every time the camera technology changes, the unexplained artifacts changes, and we New see dose. that now. Hey, honey, yeah. new ghost dropped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With UAPs, like, oh, what do you think about UAPs? Like, well, they all seem to be captured by the same Raytheon thermal imaging system, which <laughs> tells me something, you know, and that they're so, not aliens, they're ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, duh, science, man. Yeah, come on, man. So, um, uh, anyhow, be on the lookout for skyquakes, everybody. You never know when Hell that's yeah. going to happen. Uh, yeah, I, I'm tempted to be on the same page as you on this one, Andrew. But on the flip side, like, spent a lot of my life thinking that ball lightning was just a imaginary phenomenon. Uh, oh. But but it turns out to be quite real. Oh, I, I, well, yeah, ball lightning, I believed in. I think skyquakes, I think there's, I think there's a lot of things to contribute. I don't think they're BS. I think, I think there's reason to think people are hearing this stuff. We, we know there's all sorts of weird atmospheric phenomena that can happen. And I'm open to to even external causes and stuff like, you know, increased amounts of solar radiation, you know, particles, storms, whatever it could be. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I think I don't think there's going to be a singular cause. I think there's a lot of yeah. causes that could be could, there. Could be could be ghosts. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, we're minus everything Andrew said, including what I said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like <laughs> It's ghosts of the new plus one. <laughs> just, yeah, just yeah, like everything. We are, look, we don't know. We don't know. Everything that Andrew has reasoned through with science and everything that I said, which is also totally legitimate. <laughs> I like, I, you know, I tell people like, I, I think the simulation could be real. So I'm, I'm, you know, somebody says I had a, I, I rode a unicorn, went to a cavern, met a dragon. I'm like, I won't say I 100% think you're wrong. 
<laughs> yeah. Know? I'm, I'm not inclined to believe it because in my view, that could be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, uh, like I remember learning about um, uh, in, in some science book or other uh, popular science book um, that, you know, with all the jiggling that molecules do, non-zero possibility that when you punch a wall, all the <laughs> all the molecules will happen to lean left and all the wall molecules will happen to lean, lean right and your fist goes right through it. But uh, but astonishingly, vanishingly unlikely. Yeah. Um, do we want to move do picks? Yeah, yeah. dude. Uh, okay. This this is has been an after things pick again and again and again. But I'm almost done rereading Alchemy by Rory Sutherland. And uh, I think this is my second or third lap. And I'll be danged if there's not Bon Mots that, uh, you know, maybe I heard them the first time around, but I'm, I really am processing them this go around, including a couple of statistical artifacts. Uh, like he takes you through what sounds like a fair proposition that you would say yes to, which is you flip a coin. Every time you flip a coin, your net wealth can go up 50% if you win or down 40% when you lose. And you're like, well, that's, you know, clearly in my favor. And yet the more you flip, the more uh, you head towards $0 net wealth. And uh, uh, specifically, I'm actually making a modern rogue short right now. I've got, I just have to add a little bit of B-roll, but he, uh, he calls, uh, he calls orchids, the plant kingdom scam artists pointing out that if you have bees, which are a market who are in the market for nectar, and let's say you, uh, as a plant, you know, he does a lot of assigning agency to things that are not conscious, but I love it because it makes it very narratively sticky. Uh, he says, you know, you got bees coming and going. Bees can't investigate every freaking flower. They need to rely on some heuristics. So flowers can choose to spend energy on having bright colors or big petals or what have you. Uh, and then hopefully once the bees get inside as customers, they experience delicious nectar because bees gossip. They go home and do their waggle dance to tell other bees this is where the good stuff is. Whereas orchids are the one plant that just totally defaults on that prisoner's dilemma. Orchids are just like, I'm going to spend all my energy on the biggest, most beautiful mimicry, and I'm going to have no nectar inside. I'm going to have no benefit, but they're going to see the flashing lights from a long way away. There are some orchids that uh, exude pheromones that cause bees to try to copulate with the flower, and uh, there are other orchids that, um, uh, 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 oh, what was the... Uh, it, it'll hit me in a moment. There, there, one, one was pheromones, one was mimicry, uh, and the oh, one, one gets bees drunk, so they can't be bothered to go visit other flowers. Uh, that's all. Or and and uh, coincidentally, orchids seem to get pollinated early in the season, but then they get a reputation, and bees stop digging them, and as a result, r orchids are rare. Hmm. I. I heard somewhere that orchids had like like something like way an incredibly large genome compared compared to other plants, which you know might make sense and explain a lot of their weird behavior that they've got all these sort of crazy mechanisms. Yeah. Well, uh, at any rate, uh, it's a it's also a short read. I, I think around six hours. Gosh, Alchemy is just a really really good book. Yeah. Big fan of the Rory. I follow him on Twitter. He's one of my, my big follows. I like to see what he has nice. to say. Yeah. What about you guys? Got any picks? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll double down uh, uh, the Agatha show. Agatha all along. A show in which a coven of witches and Bryce Castillo go on the witches road. Uh, <laughs> To, uh, to, for, for, uh, uh, look, there's thrills and chills and, uh, I can, I give it my highest compliment of a show, which is ever rarer in our streaming age. Every time I think I'm ahead of it, I'm not, they've wow. got something, uh, they've got, they've got something, they got a little twist and turn for me and I've, uh, I've, I've dug it. I, uh, I got two picks for you. Um, one is I just. You know, it's another movie that, like, it came out, it got, like, mad reviews, and and I wouldn't argue that that was totally undeservedly, but it was still such a fun, interesting kind of movie. And that is 13th Warrior. Ooh. Wait, is that the one based on a Michael Crichton book? Yeah. The the production, so it's based on Eaters of the Dead by Michael Crichton, uh, one of the first books he wrote, actually, I think, under his name, 
which he basically combined the story of Beowulf with the story of a, um, you know, an Arab poet who went and met the Volgo Vikings and said, let me combine these stories. And, you know, that's where they, he goes on this mission with them all over the far North and they've got to fight the, the, you know, the crazies, the production was a John McTiernan film. There's a lot of production problems. Apparently at one point, even Crichton st- st- stepped in and actually directed scenes from it. Oh, wow. It eventually got completed. Tanu Bandoris is in it. Omar Sharif has a small part in it. I just like it. I just like it because it's kind of a neat kind of just story, kind of a telling of a story. It's not. Uh, it, it's it's for as troubled as the production was, it's still, I found it very entertaining, very engaging. Like, yeah, the characters aren't, aren't that well developed. The story's just pretty linear, et cetera. That being said, I still like the 13th Warrior. Prime Banderas, too. Like that's that's like that that's that's the power the power peak of of Banderas ninety nine right around uh, uh, assassins and uh, uh, what, was he in Dust Till Dawn? No, no, no. Yeah, oh, he was doing the sequel to El he was Mariachi. In, yeah, he, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, oh, uh, Joel Desperado. Yeah, Antonio Banderas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. From up there, I thought you said Brian Van. I'm like, who's this? <laughs> I'm looking up Brian Banderas. I, I, I just heard I'm it as well. <laughs> I'm like, the lesser who is known Banderas. I want to know more about their, their legacy. <laughs> Brian Banderas. I literally was looking up Brian Van because I said Antonio Banderas. Then he said the Brian Banderas, and the team connect like just, <laughs> the robots will never overtake me. <laughs> Yeah, wow, it opened number two to six cents. So it probably would have opened number one if it weren't for that, that well, big hit. Uh, uh yeah, I think uh yeah, side note uh for about AI and stuff. I think in the after things, by the way, for our listeners for that, we'll talk a bit more about some of the stuff going on AI in one. Uh my other pick, um uh, which I think we can uh, uh we could close with Brian. I don't know if you got the latest, they just found us the found this uh was apparently it was a bootleg and they actually were able to get it and record improve the quality of this was the 1970s band fog gun and their song skyquake oh wait uh, oh, it's uh, in your- uh right now yeah i just oh just, oh, just oh got really a- oh fantastic here let me let me take a look in in here uh let me uh oh yeah here it is it's skyquake by fog gun here we go buckle up uh Justin, I'll send it to you in case you want to check this out too. Yes. Damn, man, those vocals. That was yeah, great I, of us. That was yeah. really great of us. We did that really, really well. <laughs> <laughs> I, we our we best made work thing. was during our, our German tour when we were exactly. snowed in in Berlin and locked in the studio there, and we found Hitler's mm-hmm. Luger. But that's another story. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Uh, did, uh, yeah. It's been weird. We're not going to top that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, here, I'm going to, uh, uh, I'll be right back, gentlemen. <laughs> Let me uh, see if same. I can play this. This is uh, something else that I um, created personally with no help from anybody. 
Um, you know, one of the most popular things that I have done on the show is reading on PX3 polls, which are obviously very dry. You know, they are a statistical pursuit, not exactly well made for radio. Uh, and I have done it as in a, a segment called the poll dance. And so in the past, I would read, um, you know, these, uh, uh, read these poll results, but have them be, uh, you know, in, in, in the parlance of a, you know, somewhere between a carnival barker and a strip club DJ. And so with the big move to Substack, I wanted to do a little, I, I went away from doing the pole dance because one of the, I did a big survey years ago and people were like, Hey, look, I think that you're a really astute political analyst, but I can't listen to your show with my friends or family if you curse a lot and you do things like the pole dance. And so I'm like, ah, you want to know what? Let's fade away from it. But the one thing, nobody's really complained about me not cursing. The one thing that people do consistently say is I wish you'd bring back the pole dance. I wish you'd bring back the pole dance. And so with the Substack thing, I figured you want to know what? Let's dust off the pole dance. But something that has continued to happen as I've made this more of a video podcast is that things are getting flagged on YouTube, including sounds that were initially copyright free. Now they are being copyrighted. And so I decided by myself to uh, put in the blood, sweat, and tears of making a new pole dance song. And so I did the pole dance on the PX3 Extra on Thursday. And here we go. This is uh, the brand new thing that I made totally by myself. Oh, is it playing? Is it not playing for you guys? No. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, you want to know what? It's not going out on my yeah. thing. Mm. Yeah, it's... I wonder. Hold on, wait a minute. I'll just... Uh... Do, 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 do... Oh, there we go. I hear it. Get up on the pole. 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 Uh, oh, we, we, uh, all, all we were able to hear is the vocal of get up on the pole. It was pretty much that with a break beat behind it. So you didn't really miss much. But yeah, I'm just, uh, it's really great that I do these things with your talented. But, yeah. How long did it take you together to put together your home studio for that, Justin? You want to know what? Uh, uh, a lady never tells. Ha! Okay. Uh, um, it certainly it's 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 an example of ten years ago to kind of do the kind of work you'd want to do, you might have to work at some large media company with a lot of big layer of mid management and not be kind of as effective. Have to be on a team with a bunch of other people and managers and stuff doing it. Quality would be questionable. The idea if you said, hey, I want to get custom music or whatever, they would laugh at you and say, here's here's our library that we've had from yeah. 1972. You need to choose something from there. You know, um, now as a solo independent, you, you get to do this is kind of amazing and awesome. Uh, I was talking to a friend of ours who is putting together a big project that is uh, he's going to debut around the election. And uh, he foolishly was telling me that he wanted to tell everybody that he was using AI to put together a gigantic project. And I told him, literally say anything else. <laughs> literally, yeah. just, just say, this is a big project that I worked really hard on. Here you go. Boom. Like, there's just, there's, there's a reality of you using tools in the same way that if you have to, you know, if you're, manufacturing something at scale it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to do it anywhere other than do, china do, do, do we want to start maybe the show and yeah because uh, uh, this is this is good stuff all right here we go three two hello and welcome to the after things podcast where we talk about all things after <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hola. And Brian Brushwood. Howdy, howdy. Gentlemen, we were just talking about using AI in our workflow and why you should never tell people what you're doing. Yep. Uh, I, I, I shared with uh, folks here before our show began um, a, a person who I think covers AI really well, um, Ethan Mollick, who's got some very good insight worth following on Twitter. He's a professor at Wharton. And every now and then he'll post something that is true, not opinionated, but so infuriating to people that the comments get so toxic that he has to delete it or he feels he has to delete it. I yeah. wouldn't delete it. I'd be like, <laughs> just suck on it. Engage you know, me, like, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like, like if these truths are hard, they're still truths. But I understand that he is, you know, he's got a, a very, very different uh, road to hoe than I do. So um, we were talking about, Justin was talking about, you know, using AI and tools and sort of your attitude about that. Yeah. Uh, it's a great tool. It does a lot of really good things. A friend of ours is working on a big project that is going to involve a lot of AI stuff, but he's worked on it for a really long time and he's put a lot of time and effort into it. Anybody who has worked with any of these kinds of song generation models knows that it's not, you know, it makes getting the product that you want a lot faster, but if you want to get something really, really good, it does take iteration and time and and trying to figure out exactly how to you know get things out and oftentimes if you're going to do something bigger there is you know you're getting pieces that you're then editing together into a larger thing so it is a part a generation engine that is a part of a larger whole and he was talking about how he was going to present it saying that he would say wow look isn't it amazing what i made with ai and i was like for the love of god don't say that you work too hard for it. And immediately the way that the audience is going to react to it is it's cheap and you didn't work hard enough on it. Uh, uh, Brian, you learned this the hard way with, with the store, right? Didn't you do products that you were like, yeah, like they, hey, look, they're AI. It, it was, it was the first time that I had to undo a product release. And this is, uh, since we're in after things, we can share candidly. Um, uh, there is such a benefit to getting people in your email list because look, uh, yes, everybody can, if they want to, you know, uh, anybody could take your email and publicize it to the world, but you don't have to be seen uh, selling something in public, right? And nobody can compare notes with each other. Like if I were to tweet out, hey, um, we're selling uh, stickers that we made into a game, everything's generated with AI art, everybody could talk straight to each other about uh, how they feel about it, how they feel about AI and all that stuff. But in an email, you could just say, hey, I put, to and we did, we spent, we spent uh, three days putting together a game and building all the prompts and creating all these stickers. And, and we had, um, uh, 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 it, it landed with a thud to where we had to reach out to the, I think, uh, seven people who were interested. <laughs> and it was like, a, like 20 bucks. Like it took us three days to do it. And the printing alone was going to be like uh, $10 just to get the stickers. And, and we put a lot of thought into all of the elements. But all anybody saw was Dolly and just decided they didn't want to give money to it. So uh, the, way, the way we were able to handle it is contact them directly. It's like, you can have your money back uh, or you could have triple that amount in store credit. Uh, which would be yeah. more fun for you. And they're like, we'll take triple, like I just won the lottery. So, you know, you always want to make the customer uh, feel like they, they're coming out ahead. But uh, I was genuinely surprised by uh, just just the, uh, and that, that was in the nascent days. That was back when Dolly was so novel. I was convinced that people it, would be into it. Yeah, and, and they're not. And and part of it is because it is accessible and, and there's a whole, I mean, you could probably write an entire book about the concept of like, well, if tech if I am able to grasp technology, then this technology is not something this is now at its highest form the job of a technical professional, not that of an artist. That there has to be something that I can't really understand or master to for it to be true art and ai has fallen because it is democratized it has fallen below that meridian line but at the same time the output in the hands of people that really know what they're doing is really good and so it's like if, if you just say here's the thing 
and they go, great, that's awesome, then they will enjoy it. If you say, I did this with AI, they'll say, boo, I hate this. This is boring. This is stupid. And the closest thing that I can do it, and it's an, it, it's an imperfect uh, a metaphor, but you know, past, you know, 20, 30 years ago, if you were going to produce something at scale, a physical product, the likelihood that you would do it in China is very, you know, real that you're probably going to do it in China because they're going to produce it really, really cheaply, even after you factor in shipping it over. And so that's great. People love things. They love the thing that you would make for them. But if you led with, and guess what, guys? We made it in China. It's exciting to you because it helps the bottom line, but it is not at all exciting for them. It what? is, it is, it is uh, sometimes actively a reason for them to not engage with it for either reasons of perceived cheapness or any other feelings they might have toward the country of China. I think that is a fantastic parallel because there is a genuine thrill. The first time that we had a product on scamstuff.com, gear for the modern rogue, that we needed to produce at scale and that we actually, it's like, well, it's, you know, very, very expensive, prohibitively expensive to find somebody here in the United States. Uh, let's give a try to this whole, you know, China thing. Um, it is amazing to see a giant stack of something that was a thought in your head be a physical pro product. And it does. It feels exactly that way with, with AI. And so I understand that impulse to shout, can you believe it? Look at little old Brian Brushwood making a product like a real grown up businessman. Uh, that thought is novel and interesting to exactly one human on the planet, and his name is Brian Brushwood. It is not novel or interesting to anybody well, else. Sam, Sam Altman, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I do think people want to hear, look at Brian Brushwood, I made it, and now you can be a part of my success. That People want to hear that. They just don't want to hear, and I, 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 my margins are better because I... <laughs> I manufactured in China. Yeah, it is. Now, now it, it, you know, it, you know, because you've done the research yes. that it would not have been worth it to do it in America. And, and, and it would reality, not have existed. The only have existed. way this existed is because I bought it from China. <laughs> yeah, but nobody wants to hear that. Just keep no. that to yourself. Everybody is, it's it's better for everybody to to do it. And so, like, you know, our friend... He's doing this big thing, and I'm like, literally create a fiction around it. Like, make make a fiction where it's like, this is a real recording of a real thing that really happened, and these famous people really were a part of it. It is a fantastical uh, 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 moment, a piece of ephemera. And then when people say, well, that's not real, you can say, yep, it is enjoy this thing and they can suspect it's it, it, it's it's created with ai because maybe it is but at that at least you're not prejudicing them before they enjoy it by saying oh i am now not going to like it because it's something like this some of them might be turned off by it anyway but that's just a risk that you're going to run by by working with the tools that you're working with in general give clear the way for people to connect directly with the art because right now the AI thing is just something that, that gets in the way. And to be totally honest, for the vast majority of people, they don't care. I made that new pole dance song. Everyone's just happy the pole dance is back. And they're like, great, that's an amazing thing. I'm happy that this thing that, I'm, that, that I like is back. I, you know, it is a very, it is a, an emotional debate. And every time I try to apply logic to it, you know, it's going to fail. And because no. and it, it's like, I remember when, <laughs> you know, Remember in the biggest set of Marvel Secret Wars, uh, Secret Invasion rather, was that they were using AI generated art. That was yeah, the controversy. That was the problem. And and it was a and you hear that the late night with the devil, they got criticized because they used it needed they needed what looked like 1970s era cards, you know, like for talk show cards, whatever to go there. Yeah. And yeah, you know, they got criticized. And it's like, okay, the 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 thinking is you took money away from an artist. Well, there was only X amount of money in the production, you know, yeah. that, 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 that in theory, there are two things that could happen here. Uh, you know, one is they take money from some other part of the production, which really doesn't exist to, to make a thing. Like it was, there was a finite budget that the producers had a million dollars to make this, whatever, that was it. And they, Oh, we need this art. Like we don't have the money. Like 
well, what if we have, you know, 20 less extras tomorrow? Okay, we cool, we can go do this thing. Well, okay, so you're you're taking it from one person to another, justifying if you take them from there. The other thing is, had they used um, Creative Commons or, you know, if they, if they just used, like, you know, stuff that was already existence, you know, that was copyright free, nobody would be complaining. But then nobody would have got that work. You know, and an artist, somebody was paid, a prop time, prop person, a VFX artist, somebody was paid time to make this thing, to go through the versions, to get it right, and to do it. But that was, you know, that was a problem. And it's like, literally, so we, we would be happier if they just used some public domain art and put that instead of instead of AI, because literally, in that case, a human lost out. And just, just the thinking is just, just silly. You know, and from my perspective, the reason why I'm leaning more and more toward AI music in in everything that I do is simply because I can't be sure that a bot isn't going to zap a thing that I buy the license to it being royalty free at some point down the road. And now I got to wrestle with some bot. Brian, you got a bunch of stuff zapped one, on this. One full year of not being able to monetize about a third, a third of the modern rogue catalog. So imagine you have a salary and then it's just down by a third. And you say, could I have the money that I am owed for the thing that I do? And they say, no, it is going to somebody who fraudulently is taking it. And then finally, uh, after I get a hold of somebody, basically we licensed a whole bunch of music. Uh, they were actually cool about us. So I'm not going to say where, but but then but but the company got bought, and through no fault of our own, just somewhere there in the shuffle, they lost the fact that we had a license, and so they claimed one third of our content because we used a song that we paid for. And it's like yeah. uh, I, at least with a robot, you know, you have an unambiguous agreement, and I'm, that's. Uh, I'm doing all these shorts uh, for Modern Rogue and Scam Nation. I'm having a blast doing them. But now it's like all I want to do is show some bees in a hive. And I want to use AI for it. But uh, but but if I do, then uh, I have to worry about the backlash from people. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Do it. Do it. And then that's it. Just move it on. Just don't. Like, people want the content. They want the thing in the is, moment is the, is when they want. Is there a video maker? Is there a video imager? Yeah, runway. Hold on. What uh, do you want? Okay. Bees in a hive? Yep. Uh, okay. Run runway. It's called. Yeah, yeah runway ML. Yeah. yeah. Well, we already did. I think we already did a thing like this. Hold on. Wait, bees in a hive. Well, well I I, I, I never know what's in beta and what's really ready for prime time. And it's like I, I the thought of wasting time on a solution that is not going to be long term a fit. Like it was very painful to go through three different editing solutions before I finally found the right one. It's a it's a very good argument. I really thought about because I do I, the copyright the strikes and stuff on that, and I blame I do blame YouTube for that because it's a system where they put the burden on the smaller player, which they're fine to do. Yeah. But end of result is they've created a system where people have gamified it, and literally there are fraudulent actors acting there all the time with really no penalty. I do think it would be interesting to do like a, I do think at some point somebody should think about a class action lawsuit to literally file a lawsuit against like the, and, and literally go for wire fraud. Like literally to yeah. see if you can grab what, cause that is wire fraud. If I claim to own a thing and I know I didn't own a thing and I'm trying to get money for it, that's wire fraud. And like, I yeah. think literally to try to go criminal because of, and I, you know, I, I blame YouTube cause I just, I hear that story a lot. Like, nope, I had the rights to this. Like, yes, it's public domain, whatever. This company went into this licensing thing and did it. And they know, they know they're being gamed, but they're not doing anything about it. Well, we and plus also it's like, uh, I don't know, like I, 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 the, I, I was the victim of a hit and run when I was in Vegas and they finally sent me a bill for repair on the car. And it's like, uh, and they included the two days that they couldn't be renting the car in the fee that they're hitting me with for four hundred dollars and and it's like i i don't get to do that to youtube i don't get to charge youtube yeah. for their crappy system costing me a year's worth of one third of the revenue on the channel well and then their argument is like well you signed the agreement to do it but i would say the third party that goes to them and lies to do that you know uh certainly or, or goes against the agreement you bought yeah. a thing with an agreement they have violated that agreement yeah that's frustrating so yeah, I think that you know we we talked about this before. That what's going to happen is over time people are going to just give up and lose their resistance and move on. 
I do think for a lot of people, I've talked about this before, a lot of artists, struggling artists, aspiring artists, it is the, it's not the AI that bothers them. It's that some other human being can press a button and make a thing that is good or better than what they made. And that fear that, well, I'm not going to get the, I'm not going to get the praise that I fit, that I'm due for what I did. Yeah. And, uh, Brian, you know. go ahead and just check your text. Do you have your B-roll? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, also keep in mind just, that, that I have to go home to my children. Uh, is it? Oh, wow. 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 Holy moly for holy. Um, and that was literally just bees in a hive. That was the only problem. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ask your kids how it's coming, carving the resume so they can apply for a job at Mr. Slate's rock factory. Damn. Oh, okay. All right. In the mud, three girls. <laughs> that is uh, there. There's, there's even like uh focus lensing artifacting on there. It, uh, it, it totally, I mean, this is exactly how much time I need. I need just a few seconds to say the word bees and show bees in a hive. And nobody will blink an eye at that. Nobody's, nobody will say, yeah, nobody's like, hey, I, except for anybody's watching this. And they'll say, I saw it on the after things. Anyway, I love you. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, we'll uh, talk uh, about uh, you, Cherry. We uh, uh, can I talk about this Substack move? Uh, yeah, but yes, but, yes. Uh, but, oh, uh, before... I wanted to mention that in the, the main show, uh, and I also want a link to retweet. Yes, Good. same. Uh, uh one, one quick thing how much should I expect to budget for runway? I think I just bought a year for like a hundred something. Oh, and that's runway yeah, credit. So, like, look, you just yeah, do the numbers on the credits, but yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, go ahead. Uh, so I left Patreon and I moved my podcast to Substack and all that went down this week. It feels like it's been three months because it, I think it's put three months on me. It was a very <laughs> stressful decision to come to. It was a very stressful process to pull the trigger on all because of my own anxiety that I was taking a quote unquote, stable living, uh, which is very, very rare in our feral world of internet content creation to have something that is uh, a six figure uh, payday yearly. It was the bulk of it is the bulk of what I make in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, internet stuff. And also, my wife is is currently uh, out of a job, we just had a new baby. So like, there, there were uh, the decision to do it came down to if I was going to leave Patreon for Substack, when do I want to do it? And when I thought about it, it's like, all right, on the four year lunar cycle calendar, if I were to draw it up in a lab, I would do it in the final month of the election because there's never going to be a time where people are more focused on a show called politics, politics, politics than the final month of an election as everything kind of uh, gears up and everybody wants to know about the final little things that'll decide uh, this particular presidential contest. And so I have, and I have some data. I have some, uh, oh, heck I yeah. have some, some stuff for you. You guys want to go through it? Uh, yes, but first I want to sign up to your Substack right now live. Where should I go? Politics, politics, politics.com is where you need to go. Okay, politics. Com. There you go. Uh, Hold on. Uh, it says still, still secure politics. connection failed. Oh, I, I assume it's forwarding. Oh, is it? Did it uh, so there, there has been a problem with Squarespace there. Just go to takepoliticsseriously.com. Okay. That, uh, that yeah. I went to politics, politics, politics.substack.com. Yes. That's where, that's where it eventually leads. Okay. Got it. Uh, dot substack.com. Okay. Uh, you should see a big thing there. Welcome to Politics, Politics, Politics. You can click on that, and then uh, there's a subscribe button in that post. Subscribe now. Yeah. Or, or actually, you know, if it brings you right there, you can just subscribe right there. That's like the, the welcome page. Awesome. Okay, there we go. So I'm typing in. Um, can I get a coupon code here? Um... No. You need, <laughs> you need to shit. <laughs> Signed I've up. Seen, I upgraded I've seen, actually. I, I, I've, I've seen, I've seen your mint. 
<laughs> you, 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 I'm going to charge you double. <laughs> There's a reason you get a mint like that. <laughs> it's not from supporting your friend's stupid podcast. <laughs> it's from not tipping Uber drivers. <laughs> I always tip. Very good tipper. <laughs> Let me make it very clear. I don't want any rumors starting. I don't want any speculation. By the way, it's so funny because like like there's like twelve dollars a month and you and I you want to do the math and it's like uh uh it's it's a dinner. You'll buy dinner for Justin. I uh, will say the, the annual, the annual, the ninety-nine dollars is the cheapest that we've ever done the the three dollar level on Patreon. We've never done a deal, an annual deal, and uh by far the most popular thing that we have done is the $99 annual plan. Like people have people have really 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 taken to it and it's about a $50 per person haircut from where I was if people were doing $3 a week on Patreon. Mm -hmm. What I have since found out is I have combed through my Patreon numbers more and some people have gone to even emailing me about this. People were capping. Patreon allowed you to cap what you would go to each thing. So a lot of people were capping their stuff under that. So I'm probably on average, I'll have to actually run the Patreon numbers. But my guess is I'm probably on average making about what I made on all $3 uh, uh, people. So the people that would pay full freight are getting a deal. There are some folks that were paying less than that. They're going to pay more. But that has by far been the biggest uh, driver so far. The thing that people have gone for the most is less than a hundred bucks for 150 episodes of politics, politics, politics. That is fantastic. I, and I just signed up for, cause that, no, no. All right. That, that uh, ability. Well, yeah, so yeah, you are, you were at the $10 level, Andrew, that, that is, that is the founding, the founding level. Uh, that, that is, a uh, that, that ability to take a year's worth of anxiety and just make it a single band aid is the biggest thing. There are things that I subscribe to, that I never would sign up for a monthly thing, but because it's like I bought a year, I don't have to think about it for a whole year. Once a year, I'm gonna have to squeeze my eyes shut and think, do I like it this much? And the answer is, yep, I do, and then do it again. Yeah, I mean, and and so part of the reason why I left was because uh, Patreon was because they were eliminating per creation billing, which, and they're moving to monthly and annual. And I was upset about that because I, uh, liked the living that I had. I very much enjoyed it. I also was, and since we're behind the, we're amongst friends here, the longer I sat with that decision, the more I really, really, really hated Patreon for it because not only was it taking away the way I interact with my audience without informing me first when I had been on that platform for a very long time, I, I looked up what I had paid them. I paid them $70,000 over the lifetime of that account, which granted isn't as much as I guess other people, but 70,000, there's very few things that aren't the federal government of the state of California that I've paid $70,000 to uh, without getting a car or a house uh, uh, in, in the exchange. Um, but also it was the way they handled it, that they just blamed Apple, that it's like, well, Apple's making us do it on the app store. And it's they they got what they wanted, which was people to blame Apple and not to blame them. But also, I was like, wait, so you've outsourced your decision making to Apple's App Store policies? Like, you have no agency in this. You are just being forced. You're just being bent over a barrel by by Cupertino for this. Like, that's lame. That's really lame, especially when you're talking about something as serious as my living. Like, when you were telling me that you don't have any backbone, then I, I was I was cheesed off. So started talking to Substack. Substack was great. Uh, they, they were very, very confident that I would uh, get my, uh, I would get back to and exceed where I was making on Patreon. Uh, and also they were willing to kind of put the, the elbow grease behind it. Even now, there are people from Substack in my chat, because uh, uh, Substack has a chat, waiting for anybody to have any kind of issue and they respond before I do to try and nip it in the bud. In fact, Brian, that SSL cert problem with politics, politics, politics.com, they were literally just waiting until the weekend because they have to redo something with Squarespace that was stupid. And so they're gonna like clear that up, but they didn't want to take the the URL down in case it broke something 
on the site while people were still uh, uh, regularly signing up for stuff. So they're going to do that over the weekend. But they've been an absolute dream to work with. And so far, so good. You know, it has been uh, it has been a couple days. And right now, let's look. I will give you a number. So there were uh, the way that Substack does the the mergers are they comp the email that was on Patreon a month's worth of content, right? So they will they will they do a, a one month of a of complimentary at whatever level you are at. Um, they issued one thousand three hundred and fifteen comps. As of right now, of people who took advantage of those comps, or no, actually, no, no, just paid, we have 448 paid, and I'm not sure whether or not, because some people just signed up for new accounts instead of taking advantage of the ones that they had on, on Patreon. So we are over 30 and that actually lags by a couple of hours. You said you said forty percent. Let's see. Well, that's a founding member, Justin. Hi. Hey. hey. What did you say the cost on that was? The the founding membership. Yeah. Founding membership is 480. That was the old Titanic $10 tier uh, that was on. And so now everything is now monthly. It's all four weeks a month as opposed to 52 weeks a year. So everything is cheaper on Substack than it is gotcha. than it was I'm on great. Patreon. I, I, I want to give more. Let me know what I can do. Uh, well, of yeah. course, on, on the founding tier, you can write in whatever number you want. You know, so. Uh, oh, God damn it. To you. Hmm. Oh, I already paid for it, so it's not <laughs> like, no, it's sort of done. To go back and try to do that, and it's just... Uh... Okay, so, so far, uh, I am at within four days, five days of... Actually, no, it turned on on Tuesday. So within four days of the changeover, we are at 34% of what we were at, and I suspect it's probably a little bit higher because not everybody... There are comps that are outstanding that have not been redeemed. Although that might actually be a, be a false thing. So it might just be 34% or I have 34% of what I had on, on Patreon within four days. So uh, that's good. Happy with that. The good news is I'm going to get paid a lot up front because all these charges are going to go through um in the beginning of November, unless you started a new account, all the comp stuff is going to go through at the beginning of November. That's when you're going to get charged for the first time. Do, and, do they uh, spread out the payments? Do, do they take that $99 and make it monthly? They just give it to you all at once? No. Substack actually just works through your Stripe account. Mm. So I it just dumps into a Stripe account for me. They, don't, they do not pay me. Stripe will pay me. Got it. Which... Patreon, I assume, did the same thing, but they, they're they the ones that got the feel-good of, like, you just got paid wee blorb Right. I'm excited about this. I think it was a great move. Um, I, I absolutely think this is... I encourage this. Um, and so they sound like a much more forward-thinking org. I think, I think Patreon was a wonderful company when it started, had a great idea, and just made so many things possible. I think that it's just... But I do think that they were kind of right place right time yeah and then things sort of moved and i i i remember years ago they said something where and, and no disrespect towards them but it was a frustrating thing to hear them say one of the the, the things the founders said something about the fact that yeah we we don't we're going to focus on bigger types we're still going to support the smaller ones but the people doing like 20 dollars, 30 dollars a month you know we don't really make any money from that and it just seemed like just an inverse view of economics of how these things work because your big creators start at twenty or thirty dollars a month. They start there. Yeah. And, and if you're not in there, and if you're telling me you're losing money for 
a subscription service on top of just a blog and an RSS feed, and you're making, you know, you're getting five, six bucks a month. That's insane. That is absolutely, that is like your fire, your engineers, which apparently they have, cause they have no API, but anyhow, um, <laughs> It just, it was just a thing. Like, I don't, I think yet they have a fun, let me different thing where I, you know, I move my mailing list onto Substack. I have no plan to become like a Substack to sell, you know, a Substack m- membership, but that was just so much easier to go co- put everything there and do that. And going forward, like, I don't know. I mean, I initially moved to Substack because I moved my newsletter and my mailing list to Substack because they didn't charge. Like, otherwise I was on MailChimp and it was like, I was increasingly paying more and more for a, a couple thousand person mailing list because from their perspective, a couple thousand person mailing list is an email, is an e-commerce thing. And I'm, I'm churning money on it and I, I owe a little bit to them, but I was just doing a newsletter for newsletter fun. And Substack was just a cheap place for me to put it. And I was like, okay, that's cool. I like that. And I kept it there for a while. They've really steered into media and specifically political media over the last few years and uh, they've they've locked down two of my favorite uh, or two of the biggest podcasts in our field uh blocked and reported in the fifth column and uh, they they went aggressively after them the 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 thing that kind of sealed the deal for me in terms of believing in them in an ecosystem is that you know Nate Silver is somebody that Disney put tens of millions of dollars behind to build a vertical between ESPN and ABC News that has, has an outsized role in the whole world of politics, right? A lot of people pay attention to Nate Silver. They fired him because he was too expensive. And where did Nate Silver go? Was it to another media conglomerate? No, he went to Substack, created his own thing. Guess what? He's just as relevant as he's ever been. And now I actually pay him more money than I ever paid ESPN or ABC or anybody else that's there. Uh, there's another kid by the name of Gabe Fleischer who does a five day a week newsletter called uh, Wake Up to Politics. He's just out of college, and uh, he is starting his thing. They aggressively went after him. Uh, uh, they made a big deal about signing him, and like that to me shows they know this field. They know the high end. They know the low end. And what they really know, and I know this from talking to them, is that they understand that the way that they make money is by putting all of these people together in one app where they can comment on each other's work, they can be on each other's podcasts, and every time that those mailing lists interact, there's crossover, and you're now in a frictionless environment of every time that you bop over to check out somebody's guest, that you're one click away from a free subscribe, you're one click away from a paid subscription, And any time that somebody free subscribes, that's the most likely funnel for a paid subscription. Like I'm, I'm building up my base of conversion of every time that they get that, they're going to be more enticed to do it. And I know it because it's happened to me. So we have an email here. I want to ask you a question. Um, Yeah. uh, Hey, Justin, Brian, uh, Andrew, question for you. I have been producing a podcast for about the last 16 years with two other co-hosts, and we've been using the Patreon platform for this, which was certainly helpful in the beginning, but one of the problems we noticed is that we like to provide extra benefits for our fans, including a post-podcast, and trying to upload that to Patreon is a problem because they don't have an API, et cetera. Would you guys recommend switching this over to Substack? Uh-huh. I will signed say anonymous. That, I mean, I, will I, say I that the Substack RSS feed is an API.substack uh, uh, URL. So I assume that they do have an API that you can plug yes, in. Yes, we could probably provide a lot more cooler services and things for our audience because we're really into automation and stuff, including putting things in transcript form, blog post form, et cetera. But big limitation there has been that Patreon sucks balls. Well, it's really pinnated. <laughs> PSPS, yes, yeah, one of our co-hosts, one of the things he has to do is he has to go physically upload things to Patreon after each show. And when there are hiccups there, it really becomes an impediment to getting things done. Oh, man. Oh, it's, ew. oh, man. Just so many, so many things are getting better. Uh. Uh, it has been the number one question that I've gotten 
outside of, hey, can you fix the way that I've migrated is is blank other podcasts that I do that are I'm, or I'm a part of going to go to Substack? Uh, uh, look, nobody knows what the future holds, but if I were placing a bet, I have an idea. Well, I mean, what I've told everybody is that, uh, well, of the crowd that I'm around, I'm the first person to whole hog jump through the portal, right? Uh, now... There are a few ways that that goes, right? On one hand, early bird gets the worm, first mover advantage. On the other hand, sometimes the first person through the door is the first person to get shot. So uh, uh, what I've what I've told everybody is that I think all of my friends are going to wait to, all of my friends that also do shows with me or around me are going to at some point say, hey, hmm. so how did I, that launch? How did that, how did that conversion go? And I'm going to tell them a number, one, and if the number is small, whoever they'll, wrote, they'll stay on Patreon. If it's high, then uh, you're going to see a lot more shows like, on like Substack. Legit, my reason for wanting to do this, and why I agree with this person who wrote this email, which is really like that was my <laughs> thoughts, is I feel like we could be doing more for our fans and the people yes. who support us. And one of the blockers to that is that the time that it takes to get a thing to a person is limited by you know, recording the show is easy for us. Uploading, uh, other than when WordPress pushes through some sort of weird update that means that nobody's getting our stuff for a while. But WordPress is a totally together organization. Nothing to worry about there. Um, uh, 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 by the way, uh, for those of you guys who have not been keeping up, Andrew created this incredible automation tool that eliminated, I'd say, 80% of the steps that had to be manually done previously. So we're down to just the last 20, let's say. Uh, and that was uh, uh, primarily just a little bit of uh, audio tweaking, uh, exporting, and then posting on patreon had to be done by hand and all that stuff uh and uh even then that that amount of work takes about as much time for me as recording uh this program the after things program like i have to i have to and and that's just manual tedium of click the thing drag the thing do the thing do 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 and then you know arguing with patreon no i don't want to schedule a drop i would like for would you just do the my job is to be the creator and the co-creator on this program if i if i might uh shit upon patreon more <laughs> there's they've done a lot to add features that are blatant ripoffs of other popular features on other apps that nobody on Patreon asked for, that I assume they are just guessing, draw engagement, that has done nothing but clutter their app to be nigh unusable. If anything, just an annoying uh, uh, thing that you that they constantly try to push you to. It's not particularly functional and there's an opportunity cost. And, and I will say this about Patreon that is not in their control. If they want to be the everything crowd for uh, crowdfunding thing, then they're just not going to be able to cater to podcasts. They're not going to be able to cater to writers. They're not going to be able to cater to any specific thing. I, what, I eliminated this from one of my essays that I wrote, but in the week that I was deciding when to do this, Patreon sent out an email clarifying their stance on incest. Oh my God! Oh, that's right because they they have a lot of people do. Uh, they don't allow pornography, but boy, do people commission a lot well, of no, drawings. They wanted to make sure that they could protect people who did Game of Thrones illustrations because oh that God. might otherwise include incest. So they included a Game of Thrones carve out, which I'm like, look for anybody who's doing that. God bless them. May the seven have you in their heart. But mm -hmm. it's just not. It's not what I do. I would rather have a website that put the time and effort into putting me closer to Chris Saliza, who I literally like DM'd with today, former CNN. Now he's on Substack. That dude has a mailing list that might be interested. He positions himself as a centrist Look critic. Look at you dropping names I can't pronounce. Ha! Just saying. There's somebody that I'm not, I don't want to say because I want it to be a surprise. It's going to be hilarious. But Substack actually hooked it up. Uh, uh, that's going to be on the show later this month. <laughs> Um, but it's, they've given a shit about like collaboration. What they understand is what we've always understood, which is the way that you grow these shows is you appear on other people's product. That's the best way that, that people get a sense of you. And that barrier now is tissue thin. Like my friend, Matthias Shapiro 
writes a substack called Political Math or Polymath. Uh, great dude. When I posted the episode that he was on last night, I have an option to say who else is on this episode. I put him up and his subscribe button is native at the bottom of the screen when people are looking at this at my at my page at my episode it's like if if i Brilliant. do something on somebody else's site on uh, somebody else's uh, thing that's bigger than me that's huge that's invaluable they have a, a native feature where it's recommended uh, uh newsletters tom merritt said he's had like a 20 percent increase in in the paid subscriptions on his substack simply because i included his newsletter in my recommended and people that were joining me were like oh crap tom has a thing let me subscribe to it let me pay tom money uh that's what that's a platform that gives a shit about this in my opinion and and patreon was was never that and they were never going to be that and it's been terrifying to jump and i still am terrified because i'm not at where i i was before but i've shown enough progress that uh you know, if I'm if I'm 34% in in three days, if I can get to to you know 50%, but the money's front loaded, uh, then you know I I got I got time to make it up, and and that's that's all I'd want. I'm very very happy that you've made this jump. Um, very excited to see what happens next. Uh, yeah, I think we have a conversation about this. Is like I I would very much like. And for the three people listening, let us know what you think. Yeah. Well, I, I think, uh, uh, Andrew, your wife was probably one of the, the first big reasons why I was like, I was, I was more toward the gung ho position on it because we had talked about it and we were both like, you know, weighing the pros and cons. And then like you texted me back and you're like, like, Hey, by the way, I, I, I talked to Rush. She says, go all in and we were talking on the phone a couple of days later and she was just like yeah it's great i subscribe to one thing and everybody that i read on the other thing i can just find all their stuff really easy i found and then she starts naming names of people that are like that she found on the tree and i'm just like oh she really she's she now has such a gigantic footprint into this because of the platform the platform enabled it there is an extremely media literate person in this house and it is not the person on this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, hey, man, uh, speaking of, of uh, uh, media, I got to go make some with my with my own two hands. And... Hey, real quick, Brian, do you want to give a plug for the audio feature for the new iPhone? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I was showing Andrew um, the uh, in fact, I didn't even I don't even know if I used it on that. But but the the audio effects uh, makes it to where just the friction is smaller than ever between having an idea and having it posted on a platform. I'm in the curious position right now of having um, a fairly large reach between the two big YouTube channels. And only in the last 10, 11 days have I designed a workflow to start doing shorts and it's getting faster and faster. But one of the key things is not having to take out cardioid mics and setting up lavaliers and recording mm. to a zoom, moving the thing over, tweaking all that, uh, for, for good enough content, like short forms, um, just, just go. Like I sat down and just hit go and was able to bang out an entire morning's worth and it all looked great. And it looked it, it, like golden hour. Uh, the iPhone 16 pro max was maybe the best uh, thousand bucks I spent in the last two years because it truly is uh, a studio in my pocket and everything I don't know how to do, I just ask Chad GPT, everything I need, uh, you know, now they, my big pain point today, I spent, I spent 15 minutes recording a short that's going to be a, a very tight one minute long. I'm very proud of it. Uh, but then I had to spend an hour and a half trying to track down some effing B roll, B E E roll of bees. And meanwhile, Justin did it on this effing program uh and and meanwhile the, while, while neglecting his role on this podcast <laughs> like like it's uh I, I am so thankful that i have no gigs on the road and, and and that i can wake up run five miles every day and just create 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 as fast as i can create and uh, a huge part of that is the good enough 4k 
uh, cin uh, 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 cinematic video recording and the audio processing. It's great. That's great. Uh, yeah, I that audio, it's something that should have been there five years ago, but I mean, it's easier now with like the onboard processing. But that audio, like when you go see a lot of like indie films, I can close my eyes and tell you the budget, you know, of a film or how much attention they put to it, literally by the sound of the audio quality alone. And it's not just, oh, we had good mics. It's like, well, did you adjust it for room tone? Did you do anything in post? And and I've had friends that are can take a camera and can shoot the most beautiful image, maybe not the most motivated image, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> and then audio, that's just such an afterthought. And it's like, audio is like actually you can kind of put anything in a frame and it can be engaging, but if your audio sucks, well, it, it, it's the fastest way to tell amateurism in my yeah. opinion, like, and your brain knows it. Well, and <clears throat> to be honest, it makes me wonder what the next goalpost of quality will be because it is an easy button, but I wonder if it's a comic sans kind of easy button or a, uh, you know, high quality 4K easy button. Uh, I think, I think to a co couple things. One is if you just start shooting everything in widescreen, like in like a bigger, wider field of view, then you let the AI find the frame. Then literally you're just set the camera. Let me just get here. Let the AI handle it. Let the AI process the image. Then the other one's going to be the post is like, hey, these are my, and we're seeing that now where we're, there are a lot of tools that understand how you want to edit stuff. So I think we're kind of getting to the point where you can just focus on your performance and just being engaging and likable and know that it'll do the makeup and the framing and the audio and all that. Yeah. How's it been? Gentlemen, it's been after. There we go. Got it. <clears throat> I always, I'm, <laughs> the end it comes and I'm like, nobody talk, nobody talk. I don't want to have to edit this. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> It's like, whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah, I would, I would be very excited about a move to the Substack platform because part of it for automation is that, and Brian, like, uh, we'll talk because I might be able to automate some of the more back into audio cleanup stuff too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, and right now I'm not doing uh, the most opt optimal thing because uh, I'm already in the vMix environment. So it's very easy to press, press record and we have the video okay. and the audio. Um, and then, uh, audition, you know, you drag it over, but, but like, uh, sometimes you gotta, you gotta touch it. Like, like we had the bandwidth drop-offs last week. So I yeah. recorded a, uh, heads up gang. This is, this happened, <laughs> but yeah. at any rate, uh, well, cool. All right. Well, I, I'm going to go work on my thing. Cool. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, here. Be seeing you later, <laughs> honey. <laughs> but uh, let me say goodbye to the stream. Uh, all right. There we go. Bye, guys.